what is going on to YouTube? Well, what I really want to know is what's going on with that sound? What the heck is that? I don't know. Leave a comment below. Some kind of animal, a bug? A weird sound. One that I've never heard of before. Anyways, today we are at the new St. Joe Cemetery here in Cincinnati, Ohio, as opposed to the old St. Joe Cemetery, which is about a couple miles down the street. I'm going to go down there and do another story of a person who met a similar end to their lives, right? So today we're going to visit the final resting place of Michael Francis Buke, right? Michael Francis Buke. So who is this guy? Well... If you were around the Southern Ohio area in the summer of 1983, you might remember this guy that the media affectionately dubbed the Mad Hitchhiker. Oh, it finally stopped, huh? Okay, I see how you're doing it. So who is the Mad Hitchhiker? Who is Michael Buke? Well, I'll try to explain a little bit about who he was, but more about the crimes that he committed. So let's go back to May. 1983, May 14th to be exact. So a young man, Gregory Wehoff, is driving down the street, minding his own business, doing what he does best, whatever, living his life. And he sees a guy hitchhiking on the side of the road. And this guy looks nice enough, so he pulls up to him, hey, you need a ride? Sure, I need a ride. Eh? Okay, cool. He jumps in the car, and they start driving. He's like, where are you going? And he pulls out a 38 caliber revolver, and he says, anywhere I want. Okay, I see what's going on over here. I see what's going on over here. So he says, be cool, be calm, don't do anything stupid. We're going to take a little bit of a drive, a little bit out of the way. I need your car. I need you to give me everything you got in your pockets. I got problems over here. So Greg is like, all right, cool, man. Just, you know, don't hurt me or whatever. So he forces him to drive to a area, like a barren area, somewhere in Hamilton County, a little bit north of here, I believe. So they... They go to this secluded area, and Greg decides to just, he's got a bad feeling about this clown. He says, man, I'm out of here. So he makes a run for it, and the guy just shoots him in the back. Bam, bam, bam. Shoots him once in the back, once in the face. Greg falls right on the ground, and the guy just takes off. So he almost died. Thankfully, he lived, but because of that shooting, that injury, he ended up becoming paralyzed and for the rest of his life uh, would be confined to a wheelchair. We're going to fast forward a couple weeks later. Now, there's been some other robberies that they suspect of him being, uh, you know, of him committing. We're going to go to June 1st, 1983. Somebody's, you know, maybe they're hiking in a, some desolated area and they find somebody on the ground and this guy is not moving and he's not breathing the reason why is because he's dead police come up and they identify him as robert craig they don't know what happened just it looks like it's an unsolved murder right three days later two days later on june 3rd 1983 there's a guy driving down the street Visiting Ohio from Indiana, doing his best is just to live his best life, you know? This man's name was Bruce Graham. So Bruce Graham is driving down the street and he sees a guy. Young guy, looks nice enough. He, he has a gas can in his hand and he's got his thumb up, you know, like, like hitchhiking, hitchhiking. So this guy pulls up and he's like, yeah, you need to ride. He's like, yeah. Yeah, my car ran out of the gas, man. If you can get me to my car, I appreciate that, right? So he takes him, he gets in his car, he starts driving, and then he does his old uh, routine. Pulls out the old uh, 38 cal, says, just shut up, don't say anything, I need everything in your pockets. Don't do anything stupid, don't be silly. This will go as smoothly as possible. So he forces him to drive to Indiana, right? So they find a perfect location for him to do what the hell he's gonna do to this guy. And then he robs him for everything he has, and he still shoots him, even though he complied. This guy complied, said, here's this, here's that. But Mr. Graham, he got lucky. He only got grazed by a bullet to the forehead. 
right? To the forehead. Okay. So, everything's quiet now all of a sudden. Everything's quiet, and you kind of think this guy could have got away with all these crimes. You know, he's already killed somebody. He's robbed two other people. He put one in the wheelchair for the rest of his life. He almost killed a third. Who even knows what else that he's done that we don't know about? So one day, the mad hitchhiker known as Michael Francis Buke is at work and he tells one of his coworkers, maybe this guy's high on cocaine, maybe he's drunk, I don't know. He tells his coworkers, like, hey, you know that uh, mad hitchhiker that the police are looking for and they got that uh, composite drawing? I'm like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. He said, that's me. This guy's bragging about him being the mad hitchhiker to his coworker, like he's bragging to a guy about him scoring with a hot chick. So the coworker's like, oh, that's so awesome, man. I, 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 man, kudos, man. How'd you pull that off? So immediately the coworker is like, oh, excuse me. I gotta, I gotta go to the bathroom. I, I ate something bad. And he gets on the phone. And he calls the police ASAP. He said, listen, there's a guy that I work with, right? And he's a loser. He likes to do drugs or whatever. And this guy is claiming that he's the mad hitchhiker. So come on down, come talk to him. So the police, they come on down. They check this guy out. They, I guess they could tell him to put his hands up or whatever. And in his car, when the police are talking to him, the other police notice that there's a 38 caliber gun in his car. And it's not registered, of course. So they take him to jail for that. And they do a ballistics test on the gun. And wouldn't you know it, this gun is the same gun that was used to shoot Mr. Wayhoff kill Robert Craig and shoot Bruce Graham. So they come up to him with the evidence and he's like, yeah, I did it. Oh, okay. Oh, you did it. Well, that was easy. You didn't really have to, didn't have to really press him too hard. So then they tell him, hey, why'd you do this? Why are you going around shooting people? Like, what's your, what's your problem, buddy? This guy says, well, I have a pending drug charge, right? So I needed $2,500 to hire a lawyer. So for me to get the $2,500, I needed to rob somebody to steal their car so I could rob a bank with the stolen car so I could get the money together to hire a lawyer because I don't want to go to prison because of my pending drug charge. And the detectives are, you know, probably looking at each other and scratching their heads and they're saying, well, gee, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. I should actually, I should actually write this down in my notebook and, and try to make a funny movie out of how ridiculous this all is. So they ended up charging this clown with one count of aggravated murder, three counts of ag robbery, and then the three counts of, well, I, two counts of aggravated kidnapping, two counts of aggravated robbery, because the Robert Craig murder, I don't know if they were wanting to charge him with that. I think they just, got, they went with the, with the sure thing. They went with the sure thing. So this guy goes to trial. He's found guilty and he's sentenced to die via lethal injection. Now, when he's on death row, he has like this amazing conversion to Catholicism, right? And a lot of people are defending this guy. Hey, this guy's reformed. This guy, he's not the same guy that you arrested in 1983. This guy, like one of these uh, Orthodox weirdos, he was so vehemently opposed to this guy being executed. He was like, man, no, this guy is the most reformed prisoner I've ever met in my life. Please, please don't execute this guy. And this guy was trying everything. Michael was trying everything to not get executed, right? He was claiming that, uh, you know, that the medication that he was currently on would, um, you know, it, there'd be some kind of a problem with the lethal in injection medication and he'd have some kind of side effects and he wouldn't die peacefully. And, it, you know, and he's been, on, he's been on death row for so long, it's considered cruel and unusual punishment. Even his attorneys, they got cat scans of his brain to show the courts like yeah this guy's this guy's brain dead i mean not brain dead but this guy's like he has brain damage look at the cat scans guys look at that if that doesn't say brain damage 
I don't know what it does. Well, none of that really worked. None of that really worked. And he ended up being, being executed, I believe it was a June of 2010. We'll, we'll see the exact date when we get to his final resting place. But to top, to top off this wild, weird story, so this guy, he's sitting on the gurney or laying down on the gurney. He's about to be executed, right? And, you know, they offered him his last meal, right? His last meal, like, you know, you can eat whatever you want that the prison can make in Ohio. But he didn't want that. So he, didn't, he denied his, like, grandiose final meal. And he just ate whatever the other prisoners were eating. So he had chicken a la king, mashed potatoes, and lima beans, okay? Doesn't sound too uh, appetizing to me because I'm kind of hungry right now. So this guy eats his food and he's on the, so now he's like strapped down and he's crying. This guy is bawling like a baby, bawling like a newborn baby. This guy's going crazy. According to the witnesses, his, his face was just soaked in cheeks and tears. And it was, just, it was a mess. He's just crying. Couldn't even get it out straight. He's just crying, 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 crying. And they asked this guy right here. This is him right here, Michael Francis Buke. Well, it doesn't say the exact execution date, but I'll put it up on the video, right? I'm imagining that's his dad. Don't know what the mom is. So anyways, so this guy, this guy right here, they said, hey, do you have any last words? And he says, as a matter of fact, I do. So this guy starts reciting the five glorious mysteries of the Catholic Church. Okay, that's, that's words to live by, I'm, I'm assuming. So, and this guy's choking up, crying, just all bad, right? All tears, all bad. And then he starts reciting the Apostles' Creed with several other prayers. So this guy, he's praying, he's doing the, he's doing the Apostles' Creed, he's talking about the, the benevolent Catholic Church, uh, he's doing it all. He's doing it big time. This guy's kind of, you know, we're waiting for you to get done, Mr. Burke, Mr. Buke, excuse me, Mr. Buke, so you could, uh, so you can, uh, you know, we can get on with this execution. And then, you know, this guy's not done because the warden was like, hey, are you done? Are you done? I guess he wasn't done. So after that, then he starts reciting that that prayer, you know, the uh, the uh, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. This guy recites that prayer 53 times in a row. <coughs> Excuse me. Still a little bit under the weather, but I'm pushing through. 53 times in a row. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. This went on with him in the prayers. 17 minutes. 17 minutes. So everyone's just like rolling their eyes. They're just like looking at their watches, looking at whatever. You can't bring a phone in there because, you know, pictures. And waiting for this guy to just be done with whatever he's reciting so they can get on with the execution, so they can get on with their life. And finally, after he was done, then they finally executed him. It went pretty smoothly. So, as I always say, payable on death. Payable on death. All right, guys, let's get out of here. But before I end the video, this is interesting. This, I always find interesting things in these stories. This is pretty interesting. Is this door open, by the way? I guess it is not. I was going to go in there and get some of that free air conditioning that they've been talking about for so many years. This thing called air conditioning. So that last guy that I was talking about in that story... The Bruce Graham, the guy that almost got killed that a bullet grazed his forehead. So this guy, Bruce Graham, he was actually advocating for this guy to, uh, to his, for his sentence to be commuted to life, right? He's like, nah, this guy's reformed. This guy's definitely reformed. Ah, this one's open. Cool. Let's cool off for a little while. It's too hot out there. No, but this guy, so he's like, no, he goes, I'm against his... Uh, execution. The wife of the man that he put in the wheelchair for the rest of his life, uh, Gregory Wehoff, she was a witness to the execution, I believe, and she was not for 
commuting his sentence to life. No, because he technically killed her husband because even though, hello, even though he wasn't, he was responsible for his death, he was responsible for his death. So it's kind of funny to, it's kind of funny to forgive somebody for almost killing you. Like if he would have killed you, if that bullet would have gone the other way, you wouldn't have been around to forgive this guy. Anyways, <sighs> now that I'm cooled off, I am out of here. I think I've scared that lady enough for one day. All right, guys, catch up with you on the flip side. Be good, y'all. Peace out.